Hello, this is a redo of my video on, on the uh, Cantor's Paradox and the idea of the ultimate set. And Cantor's Paradox is stated as such that uh, if we posit an ultimate set, then well, what about the power set of that set, okay, or the permutation of all the members of that set? Uh, would that not be greater than the ultimate set? Hence, the ultimate set is not the ultimate set. And whatever set we posit as the ultimate set would have this paradox. I want to propose that there is a potential solution to that paradox. In my last video, I made reference, the one I redid, the one that I'm redoing now, but the previous one, I made references to the null set that were not accurate. Uh, I apologize for that, and we're not going to discuss the null set. I was trying to get to some concept of true nothingness that would be beyond what set theory would define as the null set, equating to the ultimate, but the problem is uh, if the ultimate doesn't give me the power to uh, communicate that, it's not going to come out no matter how many times I do this. So I would say that we cannot mathematically describe the ultimate set because metaphysically the ultimate set doesn't subject itself to mathematics. But what I think we can say is that the ultimate set ceases to be paradoxical on one condition. And that is if all members of the ultimate, if there, if there is no such thing as a permutation of the ultimate set. If the permutation of the ultimate set does not exist as a concept, and there is one way that would be possible, and that would be if the universe seen from the level of the ultimate set would be undifferentiated. Remember that sets have members in them, right? The set of natural numbers is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, 9, 10, on to um, going up in, in cardinality. Um, the set of real numbers has the real numbers. Uh, the set of real numbers can be defined as something smooth, but even there, there's some sense of differentiation in the sense that we don't say that pi is equal to e. Okay, we, But from the standpoint of the ultimate, we might be speaking of this thing that we could call non-differentiation. That um, philosophically, now again, this is not mathematics, because mathematically we can't say whether this exists or not. But what we can say is that once we've defined this as existing, there's no paradox. Because there's no power, power set when there isn't differentiation. The two go together. Um, so I would posit that this is a possible way that, um, with something transcending mathematics, that you can still have a kind of ultimate set uh, that would not be a set maybe in the defined sense of what a set is but that it would not be contradictory according to set theory. And this, of course, would lead into metaphysics, it would lead into spiritual philosophy, and it would lead into the whole idea of a ground of being. Um, but I think, importantly, for a, dis a discussion of kind of the analytic philosophy that um, people, uh, people have addressed this question from the standpoint of analytic philosophy, it would not be contradictory. Because suddenly you would have a set that um, there would be no, no permutations of members of that set because you don't speak of members of that set as being separate. You, you speak of the set itself as being the one or the ultimate. And I believe Cantor himself believed in, in a concept similar to that. And um, so in some sense, Cantor's metaphysical beliefs maybe it answered his mathematical beliefs. The only question is I don't think uh, that this ultimate set subjects itself to the kind of mathematical construction that maybe people uh, w would want. And so in some sense, if this set exists, and I believe it does, you have to accept it as, as an ultimate mystery. Thank you very much. And I think that uh, this one went way better than last one, that's for sure.